Hey, what's up, Yvonne? It is very, very late. We are post service here on Saturday night at Press here in Santa Elena in beautiful Napa Valley. Nice, gorgeous, kind of uh, overcast, rainy day here today. Um, and just before the holidays, we are uh, we're feeling that holiday spirit, that holiday vibe. And in keeping with the tradition of me going live every night, here I am before midnight, my time, of course. And uh, I thought I would try something new tonight, um, something that I wanted to try for a little while now. I haven't, uh, I haven't gotten the energy or the courage, I guess, to do it, but this sort of inspired me. Um, so we're gonna try something tonight. So I am off in love with a lot of wine at the end of the night, and we call that the dregs, D-R-E-G-S. -D um, so basically, when we decant wine, or even when people, um, leave it a few bottles behind. Sorry, this is like driving me crazy. I'm just gonna shift you guys slightly. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, I'm kind of vain all about that. Um, basically, when there's a little bit of wine left over in a bottle, uh, either from someone uh, leaving the bottle or maybe even from us decanting off of the sediment and having that little bit of wine left over, we call that the dregs. So I've got a little bit of that left tonight and I figured with all the wine I have left over, it's, and we always revisit it every, at the end of the night, um, I might as well just try to do that on camera. And um, I'm sure a lot of you are asleep out there and um, maybe waking up to this in the morning, but this is something that we do every night and I thought I'd bring it to you live and on camera. So uh, I picked two bottles that we had a little extra of, a little leftover. Um, one is actually one that we have by the glass, but it was a little bit leftover. This 2015 Calder Charbono. Uh, Charbono is a varietal. It is a, an old varietal here in the Napa Valley. It's something that's uh, got some old vines still left over. So you can find vines as old as about 60 years old around here. It's also known as Bernarda, so if you're more familiar with the Argent Argentinian grape Bernardo, which is often blended with Malbec. This is the same grape, just called Charbono. Um, takes on many different personalities. I've seen it heavily oak, sort of extracted, really big, really opulent, and then on the other side of the spectrum, more like this, a little lighter, leaner, brighter, tartar, um, and a little bit more acid. This is an awesome, awesome wine if you guys are unfamiliar. This is Calder Charbono. This is Rory Williams. This is the son of John Williams, the winemaker and owner of Frog's Leap Winery in, in Rutherford. This is his son, Rory. He's a super cool guy, really uh, hands-on with the farming side of things. And he's got his own, uh, own label called Char, called Char, gosh, this is what happens in the name, called Calder, wow, that's really hard to say. Um, he does everything from Petit Syrah to Riesling, Charbonneau. We currently have this by the glass, so I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about this and what this smells like. I'm pretty familiar with it already, but let's get into it. Mm, gorgeous. On the nose, it is really, really bright, tart, tart cranberry. Um, this is a wine that is a little bit dark and brooding. It reminds me a lot of like a just a straight uh, Langa Nebbiolo Dolcetto, things that we talked about last night with the Beaujolais, um, but a little bit more dark, a little bit more spicy, a little closer to something like a Malbec. Really, really pretty, pretty dark fruit, a lot of violet, a lot of intense character on the nose. Let's give them a palette. Mm. This thing's got acid for days. Crazy, crazy wine on the lighter side of things. As this wine gets a little bit of air, it starts to take on a bit of density. So it is a, um, a slightly more weighty wine than it normally is when we first open it. Really, really dark, very earth driven. Think Malbec, but think a little bit darker and more cranberry instead of more of that pretty red, um, more brambly side of things. What I love about this and what I love about it blended with the Malbec is this gives a little bit of acid, a little bit of backbone to that Malbec, which can often just be a little bit more fruit heavy, a little less acid, uh, depending on, of course, where it's made. Um, but by itself, this wine is really, really fantastic. Great, great food wine. Awesome with something like short ribs, short ribs which we just put in the menu tonight. Mm. I love this wine. It's really, really floral right now, a little spicy but definitely has a ton of great, great tart, big fruit. Okay, this second wine, um, a wine that I've talked about on Instagram before. Actually, I think I've talked about both of these wines on Instagram before. Uh, this is Lager Meredith from Mount Veeder, uh, an awesome little property up on the mountain farms by Carol Meredith and her husband, Steve Legier. Uh, Carol is a really famous uh, UC Davis professor. You might recognize her from the Psalm films. She's the one that says bullshit. She's awesome. Um, but this is their property. They specialize in Syrah. They also make a little Malbec, I think, and then Tribadrag. 
and uh, which is Zinfandel, and then a little bit of Mondeuse, but Syrah is kind of their specialty. This is an older bottle, so that's why you see, if you can see this glass right here, it's got a little bit of um, particling around the edges, so that's just the sediment. So basically what I did is I didn't pour the entire bottle out. I left what's called the dregs, and that's what's in my glass right now. So we're, we'll let that settle. We won't swirl it, and then I'll just kind of take it up to my nose and smell it and see what's going on in the glass because it's important to see how a wine evolves and develops over the course of a night. They really, really can change. And um, as I talked about with decanting before, in fact, if you haven't caught that video that I did for Kara McNeil on her channel, uh, I talked a little bit about decanting and my feelings on decanting. I don't love decanting wines, especially at this time in their life. It can be a little bit jarring for the wine and oftentimes you miss some of the steps that happen. So we like to taste the wine when we first open it. We like to check back, see what's going on with the wine with the guests, make sure it's kind of going in the right direction, then we revisit at the end of the night to see where it went. So that's what we're doing with the revisiting of the drag. So let's get on the nose. Wow. When I opened this, it was a lot more closed, a lot less of um, that really pretty rosiness on the nose. Now I should, I should talk about the style of this wine. This is not going to be your big opulent California Syrah a la Colgan, a la, um, who are the other big ones? Um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank right now, sorry. Um, really not going to give you more of that like chocolate brownie coffee mocha. This guy leans a little bit back. If you're familiar with the wines of like Rene Rostang in the Northern Rhone, uh, a little bit more along the lines of that where they they really value things like acidity. They value things like a little bit of, of acid, a little bit of, um, a little bit of structure and not so much of that rich vibrant intensity that you get right up in the in the nose and in the mouth early on in its life. This is a wine that develops character as it ages and really wants a little time to just relax. What I love about this wine is that they have made these older vintages like this 2000 available to us uh, and it's really really reasonable on the list. It's 140 on the list for a 2000 Legere Meredith. So let's get back into the nose now that uh, I've let it sit a little bit really really floral a lot more vibrant a lot more expressive a lot less closed than it was when i first opened it now it's starting to take on a little bit of that coffee a little bit of that roasted charcuterie something that syrah is really known for it gets a little bit gamey it's a little bit roasted and um, I think it has a lot of character. I think it's a really cool, cool wine with a ton of personality. Um, it can be very, very different, just like the Charbonneau stylistically across the board. Typically, I'm not used to a Syrah with this much acid in California, but knowing that it's from Mount Veeder, a cooler, cli or cooler climate AVA, uh, and farmed and made in a style that's a little bit more old world, a little bit more restrained, I'm not that surprised that this wine drinks the way that it does. Now, I should also add that as it sits with those bitter, bitter dregs, it can take on a little bit of that bitter quality, which is what it's getting now, but getting a little bit more weight, getting a little bit more intensity. The air really gave this wine the density that it wanted, um, and it's just started to come out now. So I will leave you there. Um, this is kind of fun. Tell me if you liked it. I think um, we always have wine at the end of the night. Like I said, I think this is something I will hopefully continue, and uh, hopefully you guys will say yes or no, we like it, we don't like it, uh, give me more or give me less. So thank you very much for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you liked it, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see more, and uh, I will see you guys again manana. Bye.